Hello everybody, I'm Jim McMahon and with me is Gorilla Mezzo. Hello, hello, we are going to break down these leaked items from Blood Bowl 2020. Uh, again, no one else on the internet has any access to this whatsoever. The only place you're going to find this information is youtube.com slash jimmyfantastic or jimmyfantastic.com. So we're going to go right through these rules. We're going to highlight a bunch of the new changes, and we're just going to have kind of a stream of consciousness as we uh, get ourselves psyched up for Blood Bowl 2020. Jim, take it away. Oh, yeah. So what I've done is I've got the most interesting pages. Like there's a bunch of, uh, there's a bunch of them leaked. I put the link in the video description. And uh, so I've selected the, most, the more interesting pages. So... Uh, on here, you know, there's a few things that you can pick out. Player status is on page 26. That's going to be pretty clearly. Um, they've defined open as being a player who is in tackle zones and marked as a player who is in one or more tackle zones. Um, so that's that's something. <laughs> um, the others are all pretty self-explanatory. Traits are basically what they've uh, what they've renamed extraordinary skills to. Um, so it's stuff like wild animal and bombardier and things like that thing. Well, not wild animal, is it? Animal savagery now. Skills that you can't learn basically are now traits. Uh, can deduce that. Um, and this regional special rules, I feel like that's gonna be the uh, stuff like old world cup and things like that, but obviously we don't know yet. Um, and there's a bunch of uh, teams. The teams, um, there's yeah, there's there's teams right, and then on this page you can see that the board size is the same as it always was, and the teams included in the box are the Black Orc team and the Imperial team. So that's pretty much all the same, and there's nothing to talk about there really, is there, Gorilla? <laughs> no, it sounded pretty good to me. I'm just happy to know that Jim has confirmed first on the internet that there are going to be teams in Blood Bowl 2020. <laughs> uh, you, that's what I was trying to say. The teams that are included are, are only the ones with miniatures available. That's, that's, that that's makes a little bit more sense. <laughs> yes, that's what I was trying to get out. <laughs> right, so this is, this is, a th this is kind of semi-interesting. Um, can I rotate this? Yes, I can. So... On, on This is the uh, team sheet, um, the new team sheet. As you can see, there's no category for fan factor, no team value for fan factor. There are dedicated fans, and in a later section, there's a thing that mentions fan factor when playing a game. So fan, fan factor looks to be, like fame looks to be renamed to fan factor and calculated on a per match basis. And the dedicated fans might might influence that somehow. And also we have a category unspent SPP, which is really weird, isn't it? Implying that you spend SPP after you've gained it rather than, um, you know, rather than just hitting specific points. It's like you spend SPP to get level ups, which is a pretty interesting change potentially somehow. Uh, yeah, interesting. I, that, I wonder, and I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves here, but I wonder if that plays into that whole... Uh, chain like the random skill uh, acquisition and whatnot. Yes, it absolutely could do. Yeah, very interesting. Um, so here, th this is this is a really cool change. The one that nearly everybody should be happy with. <laughs> We've got uh, the kickoff t event table has been revamped, and it's been toned down. Everything, all the bad things have been toned down a bit. Get the ref remains the same. Uh, right becomes a timeout. So that if it's late in a half, it will go back. You won't be feel cheated out of a two or three turn score anymore. So that's nice, isn't it? Um, and that's a great change. Solid defense is this is actually a huge nerf to per, to perfect defense because only up to six or well D three plus three open players um, can be set up again anywhere. But obviously, probably your players that you set up on the LOS will be marked, and therefore you will not be able to move your LOS. In response and on a perfect defense but now it's only a solid defense not perfect <laughs> <laughs> um high kick remains the same cheering fans is different uh, subtly different it adds the number of cheerleaders you do not you know so fan factor fame is completely irrelevant um and then you roll on the prayers to nuffle table which is not here so we don't know what that's going to be but um you know that's interesting isn't it 
and also it's been moved right um sorry brilliant coaching's been moved from an eight to a seven so brilliant coaching will be more popular meaning assistant coaches will have more value than cheerleaders uh, both coaches roll a d6 and add the number of assistant coaches so actually maybe the press enough will have a bigger effect um to counteract the same cost as assistant coaches bearing in mind that a brilliant coaching will happen more often <laughs> and they only get one extra reroll for the drive not for the half so that's interesting as well, isn't it? Um, changing weather is the same as it was. Um, the ball will scatter. Ooh. Um, that maybe it's just one square then, eh? That's interesting. So the scattering is described yeah. on a page, but we don't have that page. So that implies that not to get ahead of ourselves, inaccurate passes will only scatter one square. That's it. That is interesting. Um, Quick snap is again nerfed D three plus three open players. So if you're trying a one turn or just you know maximizing blocks, you won't be able to move the guys who are on who are already in contact on the line of scrimmage. Uh, blitz is not really a big nerf because of course it was only open players that could act anyway. So it, you know you have maximum eight open players, and now it's D three plus three. So often it's not going to be much different to how it is now, but it is nerfed. And everybody, I think, is happy with Blitz being nerfed a little bit. Officious Ref is a change to throw a rock. And I think this is a fantastic change. Roll a d6 and add the fan factor. So this is the only one using fan factor, which is presumably fame. Uh, renamed and changed somehow. The, cho the coach that rolls the lowest uh, selects one of their players. And then you roll d6 on a 2+. plus. He's st stunned. And on a one, he's sent off. Um, you can argue the call on that send off. That That's proven on page 63 was leaked. So that's great. You can't have a player killed from Throw a Rock anymore. You can still lose him for the rest of the match, but he will not die. And that, obviously, that's a great that's a great change. And, and he's obviously less... You, you can't ever apo him. So he's more likely to be out for the game in one respect. But the fact that you can argue the call is great because sometimes that will work and nothing will happen to him at all. And then pitch invasion, this is going to be a bit of a pain to do in real life, like with dice, having to randomly determine everything. But, okay, this is the other one that uses the fan fact. <laughs> um, and then the person who loses that roll-off selects D3 and they're stunned. So, like, that's brilliant, isn't it? No more eight on one side stunned or something really yeah. ludicrous. So, yeah, yeah, I'm uh, I'm curious. I don't... This is just a, a just an aesthetic thing, but... I wish they would either commit to fan factor being a thing or not being a thing. <laughs> it seems like they're kind of towing the line here. Um, Cause I was going to point out that with cheering fans and brilliant coaching without fan factor, it makes the choice to buy those a little bit more strategic, I guess. Um, yeah. Or at least not depending on the matchup, depending on, you know, the, the success of the other team you're playing or whatnot. But now with Fan Factor down there, I don't know what to think, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's, it's probably like seeing as one has such a big advantage in a roll-off, it's probably worth having at least having one cheerleader and one assistant coach, right? It makes you like two to one favorite, doesn't it, when you've got plus one, I believe. Yeah, but there's no, no way to buy Fan... Not that anyone really ever should, but there's no way to buy Fan Factor anymore based off of the, the pricing on the... Uh, on the roster sheet there, so yeah. Um, and again, again, I don't really look at that as a negative because why would you ever buy Fan Factor? But <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, interesting. I, I, uh, I think I agree with you on this. I really like these changes. Um, Quick Snap seems to be in in my read. I guess Quick Snap or Perfect D or sorry, Solid D. You know, quick snap. I feel like it's going to be really hard to benefit from that in any meaningful way, other than moving up to six. You know, between four and six dudes that you didn't really need to move to begin with. Yeah. Um. Because yeah, you're not going to affect. Yeah, you're not going to affect a uh, uh, a one turn with it anymore. Not directly, at least. Uh, and nor are you going to be able to like free a guy from like. You know, like a dodge, like if you just didn't want to throw blocks in the LOS for whatever reason, you couldn't use it to get a guy free and save yourself a dodge roll. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was but, often nice if you were like uh, elves and they had three guys on the LOS and you just put an elf yeah. on them and then you would, you would move them away for free, yeah. 
Exactly. But then the, the trade off though, solid defense. Uh, I, that's probably the one other than maybe a blitz. That's probably the one that is like secretly ruined more games for me than most other kickoffs. And it's, yeah, I love, I really love that change. And again, you could still get like, you know, out strength and, 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 you know, and, and completely manned up by extra guys pouring in, you know, at their own, you know, strategy there so they can make sure that you can't get any two dice blocks on them, but it's far less, it's far less now. And, uh, probably really does help out those high strength teams that usually are at a little bit of a disadvantage against agi teams. Yeah, I think I think that is a huge nerf to pe- to perfect even. I think that's I think that's a good thing really. Yeah. Uh, they 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 you've still got to think about all of these results but you know they're all a bit less brutal. I think I feel like blitz could have been nerfed even harder but it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I I think I agree. I I, mean, I think I agree with that cuz yeah, at the end of the day D3 plus three. I mean, that's four players. You know, most people move every player on a blitz whether they need to or not. If anything, the <laughs> the current version of it might protect people from ruining their game on a blitz. Actually, you know, we've yeah. all seen that where yeah. they just flood everyone down and then waste a re-roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. And this is quite important on this page. Kick deviation is described. Um, so... When when something deviates, you roll a d8 and a d6 to determine it. So, you know, that's going to be how it currently is, right? D6 in a random direction. So keep that in mind for later. <laughs> right. Which is right now. Noted. Brilliant. <laughs> so here's the, here's the new passing. Um, it's pretty much the same, you know, you declare the pass. However, you do roll to see how accurate the pass is before the interference roll, which is now no, it's no longer an intercept roll because you could be able to deflect it, not just intercept it. So that's interesting, isn't it? That might mean that it becomes more likely to, it might be more likely to deflect or intercept than it used to be. Or it might be that only super agile players could actually catch it. You know, maybe he's, um, maybe he's only like, you know, zombies could only deflect it and maybe he's, Elves could catch it. You know, who knows? Who knows what that means? It will intercept it rather than catch it. Um, and then you resolve it. So here, you measure the range at exactly the same as it currently is. Then the accuracy is all minus one from what it currently is. And there's no plus one for a quick pass. Short pass is now minus one instead of a zero. Long pass is minus two instead of minus one. Long bomb is minus three instead of minus two. So what this means is it's it's um, there's actually no difference between a passing uh, well no it doesn't mean that actually <laughs> it means you're more likely to fumble and stuff than you would have been in the old rules um it's still got the minus one for being marked then if the passing ability te- test is passed or if the roll is a natural six the pass is accurate and the ball will land in the target square um if the passing ability test is failed the pass is inaccurate and it will scatter from the target square before landing that's if it's inaccurate However, wildly inaccurate, if the dice roll is a one after modifiers, and presumably this is a one or less, it is not worded very well, but it should be a one or less, after modifiers have been applied, the ball will deviate from the square occupied by the player performing the pass action. So what that means, that, so that's the same as the kickoff, right? It's going to go in an absolutely random direction, D6 squares. That's going to be completely crazy and that's going to be more that's going to happen more often than fumbled passes used to happen due to the uh due to changing this you know minus two for long passes instead of minus one so they're, they're going to be more common and also because of the widely inaccurate passes rule um a passing ability of two plus is going to be exactly the same as a passing ability of one plus and a passing ability of one plus might not even exist a two plus might be and should be the absolute best stat you can have um, and then fumbled, if a natural one is rolled, it's fumbled. And if the player has a PA of dash, the pass is automatically fumbled. And then the ball is dropped bouncing from the square and a turnover is caused. But the inaccurate, it just says it scatters. It will scatter from the target square. It doesn't say it will scatter deep like three times like it currently does. So the inaccurate passes are still pretty accurate, right? That's that's pretty yeah. interesting. Over to you, yeah, Gorilla. They- yeah, well, I, I'm kind of I'm trying to process that too. That's um, this man Blood Bowl 2020 really strange with the whole pat like passing really getting the overhaul. 
And I got to ask you a question, Jim, not to deviate too much, but if going into designing Blood Bowl, the new edition of Blood Bowl, would you have addressed passing as one of the things in the game that needed the most uh, reworking? Absolutely not. (laughs) Nor would I have, but it sure seems like that. I mean, again, we don't have all of the rules in front of us yet. We are just dealing with the leaks that we've dug out ourselves, but uh, really interesting to me. Um, that they're going in this avenue, the wildly inaccurate. I feel like there's less of a risk now that the ball will end in the square adjacent to where the passer is throwing it from. So I think you're going to see a lot of people more willing to punt the ball yeah, uh, and get that ball downfield. Like that's going to become a little bit more of a reliable strategy now, which I'm all for. I mean, that, that kind of opens the game up in a lot of ways. That's interesting, but it sure... It's just a very weird thing that they're so laser focused on passing uh, as the big fix to Blood Bowl 2020. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? It's, it's probably related to, again, the Blood Bowl Rules Commission idea of kind of cowardly game design, right? <laughs> if, you, if you mess with passing and you mess it up, who cares? <laughs> yeah, right? Because, yeah, I mean, in theory, in theory, you should be passing less than you think you should be. Uh, in any given game of Blood Bowl. That's just kind of a a good rule to have. That and try to roll less dice are Mm -hmm. good basic rules to start with when you're trying to improve at the game. But I just just did not... I never considered passing to be one of those things that I would have put like 80% of my... uh, Oh, I'm getting flown over by a helicopter. (laughs) Um, I might die. No, we're good. Okay. (laughs) Uh, yeah, it's just a, a very strange thing for them to be so focused on uh, in terms of these uh, these changes um, to the game. Yeah, it is. I, I, to be honest, I preferred it. I think I prefer not splitting it and just having agility because it's more elegant and you don't really use passing that much. It, it is nice, the split, to make elves not as good at passing and stuff and to stop the, the rampant SPP farming and stuff. But maybe you could have just taken away the one SPP for a completed pass. <laughs> I definitely would have agreed with that. I think that would be, uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I think I think if you made that change and then got ri- and then like no one would ever take a thrower without them needing to with you know without these new rules. But yeah, um, I don't know why uh, this page is here because I really don't care about throw teammate. <laughs> <laughs> well. Well, Jim, I'll say this: what two out of the five leak teams are stunty teams? So clearly, uh, you know, <laughs> they're going to be in the main book. Like uh, that is that is a thing. You know, game design for Blood Bowl has always been about the wacky things that happen in a game. Yeah, it it does look like it's been nerfed, right? Because um, normally, in 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 Blood Bowl twenty sixteen and every other edition of third edition. Um, it was a straight agility roll to land. Now you've got a, you've got nothing if it was superb, which is like presumably the same as accurate. Fumbled, same as fumbled. Successful, probably inaccurate would count as successful, and a wild one would cast as ter- would count as terrible. Right? That that seems reasonable to assume. So you're going to be successful a decent amount of the time, seeing as most of them are pretty bad at throwing. Um, so you're going to have a minus one to land. Uh, Wait a minute. That's that's right because agility's been bumped up by one, hasn't it? So now what that means is if you get an accurate one, which will usually only be on a on a natural six. So actually, it's buffed, right? It's buffed. I was being stupid then. I, I'll tell you why. It's because Monty said it had been nerfed, but it hasn't. It's been buffed. <laughs> that well, was your me. first mistake was listening to Monty. <laughs> yeah, that was silly, wasn't it? I know he's played a lot of uh, halflings, but never never listen to Monty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and uh you know again it's not that again not that anyone really would or should but like didn't look like any of the big guys that are going to be doing the throwing had passing access in any way shape or form uh other than the base you know the base skill to throw a teammate so you know you're not getting any free re-rolls anymore no you know other than maybe strong arm becomes a little more valuable now yeah the tree the tree men still start with strong arm and they, they do get passes passing on Halfling trees get passing on doubles. Oh, they do? Okay. Yeah, but Wood Elf teams don't, um, which is fair, isn't it? I guess Wood Elf teams... Yeah, they don't need it. (laughs) 
<laughs> so you can't make a pass. You can't make a quarterback three man field field of <laughs> team. <laughs> You're just not allowed, right? So God, this is funny, isn't it? This is the armor and injuries. So, oh boy, Jim's got a thing or two to say about this page. <laughs> oh yeah. So as you can see, injury table's the same, um, same as it ever was. Stunty table is the same as it as it was in 2016. So that's this is all the same. Um, injury by the crowd is just the same. Casualty rolls, big change from casualty rolls. Um, it's now a D16 rather than a D. Essentially a D6. It was a D68, but it was essentially a D6. Um, so badly hurts happening three out of eight times instead of four out of eight, how they used to. Deaths happening one out of eight times instead of one in six. Um, miss next games happening three times out of eight. And then one time out of eight. No. <laughs> <laughs> 10, 11, that's three times out of 16, isn't it? Seriously, yeah, yeah, three times out of 16, sorry. Three times out of 16, miss next game. Three times out of 16, you get the niggle injury and a miss next game. And one in eight, you get the characteristic reduction and miss next game. So miss next game is just the same as it was. Um, but niggled injuries now, rather than adding to the injury table, which was horrendous, now they you add one to the casualty table, which means that you're just more likely to be killed or suffer a characteristic reduction. So that's great. You can now have a player with two niggling injuries. It's not a problem at all. You yeah. can keep that guy. He's not going to get taken off the field more. Absolutely, yeah, because now it's like, yeah, I mean, if you're already rolling on the casualty table, the guy's coming off the pitch anyway. So if he dies, he dies at that point. But, like, you're not hamstringing yourself having a niggling injury it's a guy who's going to less reliably stay on the pitch that's pretty fantastic yeah it, it does make it less likely to be badly hurt which in turn makes it less likely that your um that your right. apothecary will be successful if you want a power up on him however you're probably not going to want to use that on a player that's niggled so you know that's okay and it's only a plus one and it, it's a d16 now so that's really not going to make a lot of difference anyway is it the first nickel is hardly going to make a difference anyway really yep so Absolutely. Um, so that's 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 really amazing really niggling injuries basically nothing so yeah all right character reduction <laughs> a characteristic reduction everything written perfectly in here i think we can move on right jim <laughs> no we can't I mean, look we're, we're laughing and we're joking about this obviously it will get around a day one but um yeah, you're all you're all to see what the injury is, and they've 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 specified that movement or strength, the characteristic is reduced by one. Makes sense. Agility, passing, or armor value, the target number is raised by one. For example, with a, a player with agility four suffers a neck injury, the characteristic would become agility five plus. So. If you get minus one agility, you'll get worse at dodging. If you get minus one passing ability, you'll get worse at passing. If you get minus one armor value, you'll become harder to be injured. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was a really weird thing that they messed that up so badly. But yeah, uh, and they, you might they, want to bring up a team sheet just so people can see what you're saying there. What happens is because armor value is done in the new style where they don't give you a number they give you the 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 target plus so it's not like your agility four which gets reduced to agility three by minus that it says your armor eight plus and the way that's specifically worded would mean that becomes an armor seven plus it would become no, an armor nine plus yeah nine plus excuse me yes, yes. I, see I, I accidentally said it the way it should have been written yes exactly it's so obvious yeah, it needs and, to be written that way. <laughs> you know, and tree men are 11 plus, halflings are, are 7 plus. So, yes, well, you know, elves are agility 2 plus, um, humans are 3 plus, elf thrower, uh, skaven throwers are, uh, are passing ability 2 plus, and halflings are 4 plus. So, all of the, those two, the higher number is worse, but with armor, the higher number is better. So, that's really, um, I can't bring it up because it, you know, it takes editing and. <laughs> <laughs> that's I'm already editing the other one, so that that's enough for that, right? <laughs> so yeah, I mean it's just it's just a bit of a joke because you know um, they've done that. So yeah, not nothing's really changed here, um, except you cannot apothecary um, 
journeymen or mercenaries. You just cannot do that at all now. So that's interesting, isn't it? That is no longer an option to use an apothecary. Yeah, everyone falling under the same umbrella as star players, um, which you couldn't apo previously. Uh, just the, mostly, I, very rarely would you, but it's a consideration for going into a game now. Yeah, yeah, you know, you, you could apo a, a, a journeyman to block a square or something sometimes. If it was crucial to stop a touchdown, you could block a square, um, something like that. And then, um, but you know, rarely, but you know, you never know. Um, fouling is exactly the same, right? So that's uh, that's unchanged. You argue the call is is exactly the same. So um, that's that's all that's all good. And uh, <laughs> it's really weird how it's so hard to move this sometimes. I don't know. <laughs> Why? Yep. And uh, as we've learned on Jimmy Fantastic's channel, just never foul and you don't have to worry about any of those considerations anyway. Exactly. <laughs> right, here we go. This is somewhat interesting. It's also somewhat hard to read because it's very blurry and it's in French. <laughs> <laughs> but um, for the sake of completeness, let, let's look at it. First of all, if we if we skip down here, these, these, are, the, these are the costs of... Um, you know, stat increases and in skills. Plus one F, that's force for uh, strength. And it looks like 80, but it also looks like 50. Um, it is similar to this very blurry five. There's a very blurry, blurry five over here, 595. And that very blurry five does look very similar to this. So it's hard to say for sure whether it's 80 or 50. Uh, I would say almost uh, certainly it's 80 because it goes 10, 20, 40, 80. Yes, but... It, you know, it also used to be plus 40 for Aj. <laughs> so, you yeah. know, it's, it's not that um, it's not that set in stone, but it, it could be 80. You know, we just don't know. It's, it, it is really blurry. Um, what what's this is, it's um, um, one of your primary skills, but uh, determined at random, is 10k TV. A primary skill that you choose is 20k. A double that chosen at random is 20k, and a double that you choose is 40k. Instead of it used to be 30k, didn't it, for a double? So that's actually uh, that's a bit of a bit of a extra. That's what makes you think it could be 80 as well for the. Uh, yeah, I really think it is 80, Jim. Plus, plus agility is now worse than it used to be because it doesn't increase your passing ability, and that's still at 40. So that really does imply. I mean, it makes sense to me that the plus strength is 80, but it could be 50. But I think it's 80 as well, I agree. Um, and then you can have plus one AV for only 10K. So that's like super cheap, isn't it, for the plus one AV because it's terrible. <laughs> and then, um, plus one movement or plus one passing ability is 20. I don't think anybody will ever take passing ability. Uh, I guess maybe tree men, right? Maybe tree men um, yeah. <laughs> for throwing half things. <laughs> but... Well, now here's a question though. Not that, again, not that you would. But if you're a dash on your passing, can you take that to make yourself a six plus? Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> so you could get your zombie passer back, Jim. You could get your zombie passer back. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you a question. What do you think the value uh, is in taking random skills on a player? Yeah, well, it's interesting, isn't it? Somebody posited that actually it could just be that mutations are random and everything else you choose. That's 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 a possibility, isn't it? Like uh, mm. second dead mutations were always random. Um, oh, but, how in yeah, that would be that would be a massive change. Yeah, and it would be a massive nerf to uh, chaos teams. But, sure would. <laughs> but I think it's much more likely that you can just choose to to have them at random. In which case, that's going to be fantastic for like Norse linemen who already have block. And none of the other general skills are really very good or very bad compared to the other ones, apart from shadowing. So that seems a good way to save some TV with those. Um, and I don't think you're probably ever going to use it on a double <laughs> because, you know. Yeah, you know, I, I, the more I think about it in the setup that you're describing there, it doesn't. This is going to sound a little offensive to Games Workshop, and I apologize in advance, audience, but it just seems a little bit too above their heads to be like, let us put in a way to 
to buy yourself 10 extra TV and value in skills. Like that's never really been what Blood Bowl's been about the way the rules are written. The way it's played is a completely different thing. So yeah. I feel like I feel like that's not the answer there. And obviously we have no way of knowing other than maybe speaking French uh, or waiting probably two days <laughs> for yeah. another league. But <laughs> at the time of the recording of this, we don't really know. I just, to me, it seems very implausible that they would add in a 10,000, what is it, a 10,000 TV cut yeah. to... Or 20,000 for then, double. To then have to print on some page somewhere a skill randomizer role. <laughs> yeah yeah it's you know? weird isn't it it is really weird i mean maybe it's just like an option to you know if you want to do something crazy like have random skills or whatever it's really weird isn't it, it who knows maybe it yeah. could be maybe it could be mutations or random which is going to be totally crazy uh, nerf it, yeah i think it, i i think that and i kind of lean more towards that i hadn't thought of that until you said that uh but i do kind of like the sound of that the other thing i was thinking of is they might just have like a smaller like a d6 chart of basic skills that you could random roll you, you could random roll on you know once yeah. for a player you know for an unskilled player so like a norse lineman couldn't do it because they already have block but block might be one of the six skills on there that you could try and get on the cheap you know yeah who knows that's it's going to be interesting to find out isn't it well continuing on the trend of uh really milking these uh stunty rules we've got um the the halfling master chef back in there and uh this is where jim was talking if you watch our other video on the teams talking about some of those team specific skills here jim walk us through this yeah um as you can see the halfling master chef there he's 300,000 gold pieces but only a hundred for teams with the halfling thimble cup special rule so of course halflings have that rule and uh, it's going to be interesting because obviously that lets them in future maybe make something like Chaos Halflings who will also get that or even Ogres, right, could have that. I mean, it sounds stupid, but they could do because I really like the idea of Ogres getting a cheaper chef. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be pretty good for them. Um, and that's, that's, uh, that's, that's unchanged. Mercenaries are unchanged. It does specify that they have a loan of 4+, plus, which is important because, you know, they, they, it doesn't have to be a 4+, plus anymore, as we've seen. Um, star players you can get. And you can get this infamous coaching staff. That's really weird, isn't it? V available to various teams. So that's definitely part of the main rules now, not, um, not optional at all or anything. And one of them is Joseph Bugman. He's available to any team. So that's that's interesting, isn't it? Um, and he gives you kind of a babe, right? Kind of a babe. Um, if you roll a one, they can be re-rolled. But you can come... I don't think babes are a thing anymore, are they? I think they've made it Bloodwiser kegs in 2016. Yeah, I believe so, so. So that's a bit strange. But also, if you can't set up 11 players at the start of a drive, he can join himself. So like that, I mean that could be kind of good for um, like stunty teams, I guess, or teams that are often going to be below eleven players. You're often going to get him as a as an extra player. It's a hundred k though. He's he is pricey, isn't he? And he's not really. Yeah, very good. I mean it's interesting though. You can think of it one of two ways though, because like a hundred k, what's the best thing you're going to buy for a hundred k? A bribe. But you know it. He kind of serves as a as an option like he you know if your guy gets sent off fouling and you only have 10 players to set up you get him back but you know he's better than a zombie yeah i think yeah so yeah so you know he's kind of you know he gives you a little bit of a babe and a little bit of bribe protection if you don't have a bench you know mm -hmm. um in terms of like a hundred thousand gold piece guy i'd be interested to see the other ones i assume there's going to be you know a half dozen of them yeah and it is good that he's available to any team so like some teams obviously will have like quite good cheap stars like uh you know dwarves having uh boomer and stuff so then they'd never take him would they but <laughs> teams like chaos that at the moment don't really have a good cheap option do they um, yeah, and might not have a bench early on in their careers either. Yeah, that, he seems like a pretty decent option for Chaos. They take a few KOs with having mostly armor rate. So yeah, it yeah. could be like something decent for those. And his stat, it, interesting, he's, uh, his passing is a 6+, plus, 
which like I don't know what stat he's meant to have for here, right? Because he's got yeah. armor nine plus. That that implies like a runner armor. Passing six plus implies like a blitzer passing. Agility three implies a blitzer. Movement five implies a blitzer. He has tackle, which implies long beard. He doesn't have block. He has wrestle. He has thick skull. He's got lawn of five plus. One thing you can determine from this is that dwarves probably won't have stone skin or something as a default. Um, you can infer that, can't you? Because he would, you'd imagine thick skull is part of just being like every dwarf has thick skull, don't they? Right, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that that's it for, for rules that aren't skills. All right. Well, thank you for walking us through that one, Jim. Thank you, everyone, for sticking around. We've got some more videos for Blood Bowl 2020 content. My name is Gorilla Metso, and I'm here with Jim McMahon. Thank you for having me, Jim. Thank you very much, Gorilla Metso, as always. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.